All right. Hello. Um, I am EXDF, and uh, today I am uh, joined by Fibble, who's going to be running uh, all Google Doodles category. Um, it was part of the Google Doodle category extensions, or at least that's what it's formerly known as. Now, uh, um, uh, multiple Google Doodles. Um, and... Uh, as part of this run, he's going to be running through every single Google Doodle made uh, since before 2012. So um, there's a lot to get through. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Yeah, thanks for the introduction. Um, really excited to be showing this off to you guys. Um, this is a run that we kind of started doing only really recently. So uh, yeah, really excited. And we can really just get right to it. Uh, so we're going to be starting off with kind of one of the weirder ones, you could say. Um, Pac-Man, which is really weird to see Google doing work with like a really big game registered trademark kind of thing. So uh, we start off with clearing the board. Yeah, and this is the earliest uh, playable Google Doodle uh, celebrating Pac-Man. And um, so as we go through the run, you will... Uh, we, we will be going through all of the... Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, got hit by a ghost, so that is a reset. But um, as we go through the run, uh, we will be um, going through all of the doodles in chronological order. Um, so it's very interesting during the run to see, uh, you know, how the doodles evolved, you know, what, what style changed and all that. Um, but as you can see, the first one made, which is this Pac-Man one, is basically just, you know... Pac-Man with a different map. Like, it, there's no real stylistic choices used here. Um, it's just, you know, Pac-Man for the sake of Pac-Man. Yeah, um, I mean, Pac-Man being such a big game, it probably is a very good strategy to clear out the board really fast, but if there is one, I don't really know it, so, um, I'm just trying to do what I know is fast. Uh, let's see. Yeah, because the ghosts can be pretty unpredictable, you know, as in a normal Pac-Man game, um, it is tough to really optimize this route, um, especially since, you know, eating ghosts, one of the only ways to protect yourself, um, you know, slows you down. So uh, now we move on to the next Google Doodle, the last one before 2012, which uh, celebrates Stanislaw Lem and his uh, uh, first publication. Yeah, the Polish author here, so... Um, this one is a really interesting one. Um, the hand-drawn style is something that uh, we haven't really seen since. Um, but um, luckily there's a fast-forward button. There's some pretty long cutscenes here. Um, there won't be any audio in the runs for a while, so I'm going to put on some nice jazzy music, royalty-free jazz music to uh, kind of have something in the background here. And as you can see, uh, every time he finishes a level, he clicks that little fast forward button down at the bottom right. Um, this is only a feature after you have completed the game at least once. Um, however, you know, that is a legal thing to do on all Doodles run, as I've already uh, completed this so you can get the speed up button. Um, I remember during my first run, I didn't know that existed, so I had a pretty slow sl uh, Stanislaw uh, Lem run. Yeah, now that we're kind of into things, we can kind of explain more about what a Google Doodle is and uh, what I'm playing this on, uh, Doodles Launcher. So, um, a Google Doodle is anything that replaces the Google logo on the Google homepage during a large event or anniversary of something. Um, the first ones were in the late 90s as the site was just getting started. Um, but the first games only start showing up around 2012 with that first Pac-Man one. And um, there's been over 40 playable doodles duel since then. Uh, just very unique experiences that commemorate a whole wide range of uh, events, people, uh, anniversaries. It's really cool and you should definitely check them out if you haven't already. So now we move on to uh, Alan, Alan Turing's 110th birthday. Um, uh, Alan Turing, uh, he made... Um, oh, sorry. Uh, he, he made this um, coding sequence uh, in order to get binary sequences. Um, and, you know, the game 
is really RNG based, and um, you could get a really easy one that has like you know one thing to change, like this one that he just got, or you could get something with like five different things, like three repeats, you know, a couple number changes, uh, a couple if ands or whatever. Yeah, so the, this, this run could really go a lot of different ways. The father of computers. Um, so I, this is a really cool doodle to go and kind of uh, play for yourself the first time. Um, but it is pretty boring to uh, run and to watch. So um, time will end for this one once I fill in the little E there on the sixth puzzle. Um, and then we're on to the 2012 Olympic ones. And... Um, there might be some games that we start getting into the run that you might remember playing for yourself because uh, a lot of these games do end up being pretty popular among uh, people, people trying to waste time at work or school. So, um, yeah. Just moving along and tearing here. On to the last one. Um, so what I'm playing on uh, is the Doodles Launcher, um, so huge thank you to community member uh, Red Mushroom for kind of putting this together. Um, it's an application that lets you run all of the Google Doodles uh, offline. So uh, hurdles now. Yeah, before the, before the uh, Doodles Launcher came out. Um, uh, Everyone would just have to open up like a ton of tabs and then, um, uh, you know, like click through the tabs. So the Stratton Hurdles is, I believe he's using double keyboard, yep. uh, which makes him go a lot faster uh, because oh. he is, you know, pressing the arrow keys twice as fast. Um, but, uh, you know, the hurdles don't matter quite as much um, because jumping actually slows you down a little bit. And through basketball, he gets eight points. Um, and he's on to slalom, which he's also using a double keyboard for, which just makes him go insanely fast, and obstacles pretty much aren't a problem. Yeah, nice little glitch here that allows me to basically continuously row very, very quickly. Um, and the interesting thing about that is that it's still only two stars out of three. Like, I don't know what would get you three stars. So we move on to soccer, oh and the point of this game is just to score one point, which he does, and now we're moving on to Star Trek. Yeah, uh, universally hated by the Google community, Star Trek Doodle uh, commemorates the anniversary of the 44th uh, broadcast, or the 44th anniversary of the first broadcast of Star Trek. Uh, just a little point and click adventure. Uh, for those four Olympic ones, I did have my second keyboard with me, you know, always have to keep that around. Um, so, a bit of an interesting strategy there. And then, after this one ends, we are on to Zamboni. So Zamboni is one of the most uh, highly regarded Google Doodles in the community. Um, it celebrates, uh, sorry, it celebrates um, Frank Zamboni, the creator of the Zamboni, uh, his 144th birthday. Um, so, yeah, the entire game is pretty much, you're, you're set up on different stages, you have these little kids or, or uh, you know, figure scares or whatever, uh, going around the ice rink and uh, leaving little tracks behind them, and you have to smooth out the ice. You just have to go over all the tracks, and meanwhile, you will be getting power-ups such as gas, such as coffee, such as, you know, bananas, which are usually a hazard, um, but can help the run in some cases, and Fibble is pretty experienced at that. Um, but yeah, just just get, uh, get the ice smooth as fast as possible. Yeah, you could say this is a bit of my specialty. Um, I spent a lot of time last year trying to push this game to the limits, you could say, speedrunning it. Um, I'm a bit rustier now. But uh, yeah, like EXDF said, definitely very highly regarded, uh, very fun little doodle. Uh, and Got the funny thing back. is, like, this this doodle was largely uh, regarded as kind of a joke um, up until, you know, uh, shenanigans basically started, you know, kind of like saying, hey, people run run Zamboni. And then no one did it. And then Fibble did it. Like, only Fibble did it. I think <laughs> I did one run, but like, 
no one was really doing it. Um, and then Fibble got really good at it, really, uh, you know, like you said, pushed the envelope as far as this game goes. Um, he did miss a little bit uh, up there in the top yeah. left, uh, so it's 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 something that he's going to have to return to, probably wasting a little bit of time. Um, but he's taking the diagonal strategy, which just kind of you know covers more area at one time, which is smart. Yeah, usually um, when you're playing normally with uh, arrow keys, hitting a banana makes you lose all your momentum and just uh, slows you down and spins you around. But for some reason, while you're playing with your mouse. The banana speeds you up a lot, so it's a really good strategy to use uh, while speedrunning it. Yeah, um... So yeah, more about Doodles Launcher. Um, unfortunately, there's been a couple of Doodles throughout the years where uh, they haven't been saved to Google's Doodle uh, webpage. They have a site where they uh, themselves kind of catalog everything that they've put out and there's been a few times where uh, once it uh, leaves the Google homepage it doesn't really show up anywhere else uh, and it's also happened with some other games that Google has put out like the Google Fruit games if you remember those yeah, from the Fruit Olympics if you're from the Olympics a few years ago um, so the Doodles launcher really helps to um, preserve um, a lot of these titles so that, you know, they aren't lost. Uh, really cool pieces of, Go really, really cool pieces of Google's history. Uh, yeah, that was a really good split um, for the ice rink, so uh, that's nice. Uh, now we have coffee, which speeds you up. Yeah, this is actually a really, really solid Zamboni run. Um... Yeah, so a, a lot of, you know, Google's history probably wouldn't be preserved with things like the Doodles launcher. Um, like, and I, I don't think a lot of it would ever be revisited, you know, without the Doodles launcher. Um, I don't imagine too many people play uh, many of the Google Doodles unless they're really bored in school or speedrunners. Um, so this really makes it accessible for more people, and I think that's a great thing. Yeah, for me, I really got started playing these through the board at school. Um, the first game I played was Google Quick Draw. Um, if some of you had played that, it's the game where you um, draw these little doodles, and a Google AI will try to guess your um, drawings. And so I played that a ton at school. Then I got into speedrunning it and found this community. Um, some just some really cool people and. Um, with so many doodles, it really offers a lot of variety um, with speedruns, depending on what you're looking for. Most people just have one or two doodles that they're really good at, um, and my goal at one point was to become the world record holder in every single one, which... Um, turned out to be pretty impossible, but I did able. I, I was able to get most of them. Um, so this is why all doodles is my category. Uh, shoot! It looks like he. Yeah. What I meant. Oh, there it is. The tip of the G. Yeah. But yeah, all doodles is a very strong category. It's also very. Un it's also a very new category. Um, I think it was suggested by you, Fibble. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um, after the creation of the doodles launcher, as like, hey, you know. Um, I mean, well, we've had all doodles before, except it was always, like... Weird. It, it was <laughs> consistently archived, yeah, so, uh, because they just couldn't keep track of all the new ones coming out, um, and so they were just like, you know, all Google Doodles, but except this, like, and so now, uh, because there's a way to keep updated with all the Google Doodles, um... It, they're all just compiled here, um, so it's, it's, it's easy to access them, and, uh... Yeah, it makes it's, it makes the all doodles experience just a lot easier. I got some bad bad coffee RNG. Usually, you're gonna try to get five here. Um, I think I only got three. It's a bit unfortunate. Um, yeah. So, coffee does speed you up, but it also makes you harder to control. I found. Um, so you know, it, it's it's a really good strat if you're you know kind of a you know. 
higher level Zamboni runner, but for someone like me, um, <laughs> you know, he, it's 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 kind of useless. Hey, we're um, but he just finished uh, Zamboni there. Yeah, yeah, I guess we got to go fast. Zamboni there, and he's moved on to uh, Chinese New Year 2013. So this is a Google Doodle from 2013 that you guessed it uh, celebrates Chinese New Year. Um, so it's basically a simple snake game, and if you've played Google Snake, it's it's kind of exactly like that. Um, if you make certain letters, though, uh, you know, certain things appear in that letter's shape. The goal is to get 50 points, and you can run over y- yourself and go off screen. Um, and he just hit 50, so he's moving on to Roswell 2013. Uh, so this, um, you know, commemorates the event of Roswell in the first place. Um, and has you go around as the alien, you know, trying to collect different parts of the UFO. Um, so the strat here is to go to the cow first so you can grab the rope, um, because that'll help you out later. Uh, you do initially, you know, are you are initially given the top part of the UFO. Um, so now he has the uh, horseshoe as well, uh, grapples the other part. He has to ring the doorbell a few times, and then that will help give oh. him the bottom part. Oh, that was really good RNG. That was some rare, um, that was some rare RNG. You don't usually get two. I'm not sure I've ever seen two uh, doorbell rings before. So now we're moving forward to uh, Chishi uh, Chilsiok Festival 2013, um, which uh, tells the story of two lovers, um, you know, bridged <laughs> together by birds. Um, and you just kind of have to keep doing that for a while. You have to keep pairing up the birds uh, with other birds of their color. Um, as you'll see in the next level. Um, and it's one of the slower paced ones, but it is pretty well made. Yeah, this one's really obscure. Um, I'm really the only person who runs this seriously. Um, I remember uh, when I first joined the uh, Google Doodle community, the thing that really got me into it was Halloween 2016, which some of you may remember as a Magic Cat Academy, where you know, you're know you a cat casting like line spells to try to defeat ghosts. Um, and I was like, hey, I need an easy Google Doodle to take the world record of, you know, as a, as a new speedrunner would. And I saw this was like 1 minute 30 seconds, and I was like, hey, you know, that sounds easy, right? And then I tried it. And this is a painful doodle to play. <laughs> Alright, uh, this the birds is pretty... Are, the birds are um, largely, you know, uh, RNG, and he's getting a lot of tiny bluebirds, which <laughs> sucks. Um, especially since he doesn't need, like, any of them. Oh, yeah, so that was a really some slow of, third level. Some um, of the worst. To the point that the characters started moving before he was finished. <laughs> uh, and that's basically the stakes of the game. Um, if they, you know, fall off the edge, then that's on you. Like, that sucks. So now moving forward, we're on uh, the Google Doodle to commemorate Google's 15th birthday. Uh, you hit a pinata until you reach 100, and it's fairly easy, like you just did it. Now we're on to Halloween 2013. Where you have to play, I think it's uh, seven six mini games. Six, six, six mini games. Um, they are very, very small games. Uh, you just have to combine different uh, elements for the potion, and then uh, just play through them. Um, so there was the guessing game, and then there was the whack-a-mole hands game. Uh, and then you carve some pumpkins, and the rat jumps over them. Yeah. Um, going back. A couple games ago, that was some of the worst luck I've ever gotten on Chishi. Um, yeah, really unfortunate there. And then we have one more. Uh, I think it was this one I haven't done yet. Or no, I already. Oh my goodness. It was this one. A bit yep, behind so my that's all the mini score. games, meaning that he can now move on to the next game, which is Doctor Who. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the series. Um, this is a Google Doodle commemorating Doctor Who. Uh, you get to pick your character, although it's largely arbitrary. Um, and then you just have to navigate a series of levels to collect all the letters of Google um, until you, you know, reach E and make it back to the TARDIS. Um, yeah, it's yeah an- so... Uh, it's another point-and-click game. Um, this is one of the really 
ones that don't have a lot of speedrunning attention, unfortunately. Even though uh, <laughs> this game is really hard to go fast um, on, there's some interesting strategies, and you'll see the last level is kind of uh, really difficult um, to speedrun. So, um, if you're looking for a Google Doodle to play, I would really suggest this one. Um, but uh, yeah, kind of as an older one, it doesn't enjoy the popularity that some of the newer games have. And uh, we'll see as we get really farther into the run, um, <coughs> maybe some more titles that you will recognize as the pterodactyl brings us to the finish and then you're on to the next level. Yeah, I will say about speedrunning this game, it is kind of obscure speedrun, it is kind of a good speedrun, uh, but it's very tedious to grind, so if you're looking for one that you don't have to grind that much, you know, this isn't the one to do. Um, it is, like Fibble said, it's very difficult to get good at this one. Um, I remember my first All Doodles run, I, I had no idea what I was doing, I was just kind of making my way through. Um, and that's kind of how I still play it. Um, Fibble, however, is just a lot better at it than I am. Um, and yeah, as you can see, he's kind of making through the uh, uh, levels at a really fast pace. Yeah, I'm going a bit safer on this just so I don't lose a ton of time, but uh, there are fast strats to this which involve just basically running through all of this. There's a certain uh, frame perfect uh, trick that you can do and just if you click on the right frame you can go through all of this in one shot. But I'm not confident enough in my abilities to do that and we are done. I hate this one. Alright, so the next one, yeah, so the next <laughs> one is uh, one that everyone hates running is um, the uh, 100th uh, anniversary of the crossword puzzle. Um, yeah, it's, it's exactly that. Um, so, uh, you have to fill in all the letters um, uh, until, you know, you've filled out the entire crossword. Um, and it can get really tedious if you don't know what you messed up on. Like, you can mess up on one letter and it won't let you through. Yeah, for somebody not good at typing, like myself, this one is really a pain uh, to run. Uh, so... I don't think I've made any mistakes yet. Uh, Not that I see. Um, okay. This is one of the only Google Doodles that doesn't uh, rely, you know, at all on RNG. So the uh, crossword is the same every time, meaning that he is just reading off of a. Uh, oh. Oh, Ellis. He did miss something. Yeah, yeah, Ellis. Um, what else? Um, ooh. Oh, come on. But yeah, like I was saying, he was basically reading off of a picture uh, to get this. Now he has one messed up on that we're both looking Arf. for. All right, and it took more than <laughs> 20 seconds to finish it. I think that's still better than any of my runs, so you're still good. Um, but yeah, a little bit of a time loss there. Yeah, that's one where you could be probably like a minute faster than I am if you just know how to type and uh, don't make any mistakes, so oh well. Nothing and now really we are moving it. on to we are moving on to the uh, 2015 Google Doodles. Uh, there were no Google uh, playable Google Doodles in uh, 2014, unfortunately. So it just goes from 2013 to 2015. Um, this is uh, celebrating the Pony Express, uh, which was a, a mail carrying service, um, you know, by horse, uh, and uh, you just pick up letters and deliver them to the town at the end. Um, there are a couple checkpoints that you have to make it through, and if you get caught by, you know, caught behind an obstacle or uh, under an avalanche or something like that, then uh, you will lose some time because you get knocked off and lose a couple letters. Since this is an any percent run and it doesn't really matter, uh, he probably won't be collecting every letter as you're seeing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just a matter of, you know, uh, avoiding the obstacles more than anything because... Um, that's kind of what it all boils down to if you don't need to collect the letters. You're just running at a steady pace the entire time, and as you can see, there are avalanches now. Uh, so there's just a number of things to avoid, uh, all a little bit different. Um, and as we go forward, I think we have, yeah, another checkpoint, and then we'll probably have um, uh, mail robbers after that. 
Hmm. And uh, soon after that would be the town. Yeah, kind of a little uh, change of pace, auto scroller. Not much to do if you know where the obstacles are and how to avoid them. It's an auto scroller if you don't uh, mess up, but you know, yeah, some people do. Now we used to have a uh, category extension for Google Doodles um, that was Pony Express Low Percent, which is just collect zero letters. It is so stupidly easy um, <laughs> that they ended up removing it and for good reason. I ran it once and I was like, this is the dumbest world record I've ever gotten. I mean, it was a tied world record but like, it, it is so pointless. Um, so now here he is finishing the run uh, and moving on to the next one, which is uh, The Gauntlet. Uh, the Gauntlet of uh, Google Doodle. Uh, we call it that as a joke because well, this is a, it's basically a collection of very simple time minigames. Um, the minigame after this, where you have to drop the, uh, costume on the actor, is, for some reason, very difficult to get the timing down, so we'll see if I get it first try here. Yeah, and thank god that this Let's level go. is early. Oh, he got it! <laughs> uh, thank god this level is early, because a lot of people, uh, mess this up, you know, pretty much every time they play it, uh, meaning they have to reset the entire game, because you have to win every minigame in order to progress to the next one. Um, so as long as he wins all the rest, which are a lot easier, um, then he should be all good. Yeah, af after that second one, none of these pose a real challenge, it's just simple minigames. Um, but as we get into yeah, something 2015 and 2016, we're going to see some more uh, doodles that require maybe a bit more skill, as you'll see soon. Yeah, like crossword, that's not skill. That's just <laughs> reading off of a script. Um, but well, this, yeah, this is starting to get to uh, skill. Like, you actually have to know what you're doing uh, before you do it. Um, and you'll see that a lot more in games such as um, uh, the Magic Cat Academies or Valentine's Day 2017 or um, Google Doodle Champion Island, which is largely regarded as, you know, the best kind and most popular. The best Google Doodle. Um, yeah, because it's the largest, um, containing seven mini games that are all pretty substantial and difficult upon first playthrough. Um, as well as uh, it's just, you know, one of the most run games in the Google Doodles category. Ooh, that was actually pretty close. Uh, I saw <laughs> you were struggling a little bit there with the uh, hardest uh, wire. I, I kind of forgot you had you had to click them to connect them. Uh, but last one here, uh, we'll be done with this. And then we just wait until we get the end screen here. On to Candy Cup. So this was a no, global... No, we go with blue. <laughs> this was a global competition held by uh, Google for Halloween 2015. Um, that had you collecting candy for a team, and then at the very end, the team with the most globally collected candy, so millions of these little candy pieces, won. And I think it was Yellow Team that won. Um, of course it was Yellow Team, she has a cat. <laughs> yeah. Everyone, everyone picked Yellow Team. So this um, audio might be a bit loud, but... The interesting thing to point out uh, here is that he's not taking the safe route in uh, just kind of hovering at the very top and then uh, going down at the Oh my ghost. goodness. Um, yeah, he's kind of getting slapped by these ghosts. But, uh, that was bad. No, throughout, uh, he was actually collecting candy the entire time. Um, so now we are moving on to Beethoven. Actually, one last thing I want to say about Candy Cup is that it is the start of the Momoverse. And if you don't know what that is, it's just the same cat appearing in like five Google Doodles. Um, so anyway... Uh, now we're on to Beethoven, where you have to match sheet music in order to uh, complete some of his most famous songs. Yeah, this one's a really interesting one. Um, you can, I mean, the speedrun for this is insane. Uh, the guy who specializes in this is just uh, kind of crazy at this. Um, it's faster on like an iPad or something where you can really see stuff more easily and um, move it kind of faster, but... Um, it's a really cool, really cool doodle with the music, and you kind of gotta memorize how these things go. 
I'm not yeah, super that's good at it. Thing but... about, that's another thing about this Google Doodle is that um, it is also one of the uh, rare Google Doodles that is not remotely RNG based um, in that all of the pieces of sheet music are always put in the exact same places. So it's just a matter of dragging and clicking uh, until you know exactly how to uh, place everything. So the world record um, is not a lot of, you know, reading the screen and trying to, um, uh, you know, guess where things go based on how they're randomly placed, but rather just, you know, point, click, point, click. Um, and that's pretty much how the whole game goes. But it's a very beautiful doodle, kind of one of the more under underappreciated ones. Actually, uh, you're kind of completely wrong. They are placed differently every single time, so there is quite a bit of RNG to this based on... Uh, Damn, never mind. I thought you mentioned once that it wasn't. No, sorry. Um, where they're placed on the screen, but we finished with that one, and then we're on to Scoville, uh, commemorating Wilbur Scoville and his Scoville scale, rating the spiciness of peppers on an uh, objective scale, which is uh, really cool. And the route they took for this uh, is a very interesting, um, oh, that was a perfect shot, uh, a very interesting route in that they made it just like a simple kind of, uh, you know, defeat the boss type game. And it's, 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 it's really interesting to see, uh, you know, how people take this at different paces. Um, another perfect shot. I'm really impressed. Uh, it's very hard to get the uh, circle right at the middle, but he's done it twice in a row. Yeah, after playing through a uh, spicy mode of this on stream, extra spicy mode, I'm <laughs> this is a welcome. Oh, that was bad. Welcome change of pace. So yeah, as far as that speed, one took two shots. Sorry, you can go ahead. That one took two shots rather than one uh, because he missed the very middle. Um, so that is a little bit of a time loss, um, but otherwise he's still moving at a very quick pace for this game. We'll try two, yeah, two hits on this one. Um, so yeah, as far as speedrun strategies go, it's uh, trying to get the little circle farthest to the left that you can kill in one hit. But these um, last two, they take two hits. And this one can sometimes be a little bit tricky, but that was a good shot there, and then that's done. And now he's going to get the clipboard saying he is the hottest man alive. And then he moves on to Clara Rockmore. Yes, sir. Um, Clara Rockmore is the inventor of the theremin, um, which is, you know, this device that you can see that she's using right here. Um, uh, it basically uses, I think, uh, vibrations um, in order to actually, you know, uh, make the sound, the electric sound that's uh, going on here. Um, so you have to hold each note for a certain um, uh, amount of time. Um, and then, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we move on to one of the more skill-based ones, which is Magic Cat Academy 1 Halloween 2016. This is the first Google Doodle that I ever really tried to speedrun. Uh, I failed miserably uh, because I was a new speedrunner. Um, but this is a very difficult one to speedrun because drawing the symbols is extraordinarily difficult at a fast pace unless you have like a drawing tablet. However, I will say uh, the world record for this game is n done with a uh, mouse rather than a drawing tablet, which is very impressive. Um, if you look at the world record, um, like this looks really fast, what Fibble's doing right here. It is, it is about, you know, twice as fast. One, two, three, <laughs> three times as fast. Oh, okay. Like it's, it's, it's <laughs> extraordinarily fast. I'm pretty um, bad at this compared to some of those guys, so. But yeah, yeah. King Yeti is the uh, world record holder for this. I know that because I am a mod of this game now. Um, funny how things change. But uh, yeah, so he's moving on to the second level. There is a boss at the end of each level. Um, and uh, I guess he's just kind of thanking his lucky stars that he didn't get soft locked uh, at the very beginning. Yeah, that can happen sometimes, but not very common, so... Yeah, these uh, these ghosts appear in the same exact way every single time, so um, the runners of this game have kind of calculated the best uh, sequence of drawings to uh, go through, but um, this is one of the few games that I've never really 
gotten into much as a standalone speed game, so I unfortunately have not memorized all of these. I just react to what I see. Um, my Google Quick Draw experience kind of helps me with the uh, quicker mouse movements and reaction time, but uh, like I said earlier, people go way f are going way faster than this on a speedrun. It's pretty insane what they're capable of doing. Yeah, Fibble says he's not very experienced in this game, but don't let that fool you. He's still just one of the, you know, best at video games in the entire uh, Google speedrunning community. Uh, meaning that he just, you know, is still really good at this game, even if it's just reaction time that he's using. Um, so, yeah, now he's in the third level, and I believe the one, the boss at the end of this level is uh, a model of the uh, solar system. Uh, that starts spinning at you, and it has a couple of different levels. Yeah, this fella... Oop. So yeah, this is the first uh, really substantial size uh, Google Doodle. Um, at least at the time, for me, it really revolutionized what a Google Doodle could be. Um, Showing that it didn't have to be just a you know simple educational game, it could just be you know a a, a thing that is pretty enjoyable to play, um, if still simple. Um, so level four is uh, probably the most popular level, just because the boss at the end is he's he's just a big daddy. <laughs> yeah, th but, this um, um this game especially uh, Magic Hat Academy by itself. Definitely one of the more popular and well-known uh, doodles, just because um, it was really fun when it first came out during Halloween. Um, so this one might be one that you're a bit more familiar with, some of you. And that's that's probably because uh, it did revolutionize, you know, Google Doodles as a whole, um, kind of paving the way for things such as uh, Champion Island or things like that. Um, this is the only Google Doodle that has gotten a sequel so far, uh, but due to data mining, we uh, know that's bound to change at some point. Um, and uh, this is also the second installment in the Momoverse, uh, where Momo is now the protagonist instead of just a side character on the yellow team, uh, being you know, on the yellow team of Candy Cup uh, that uh, Momo was just you know held as. Uh, uh, Momo's owner, you know, flew around the map. Uh, but now, uh, she is, you know, casting spells, defeating ghosts, uh, and kind of becomes the staple of Halloween the Google Doodles. Yeah, interesting, interesting lore <laughs> that you start to get into surprisingly with some of these. Um, so last level here, just some long strings of spells that you have to cast. Um, let's see here. Oh. Next is Valentine's Day, which is another pretty substantial long one. Um, I think Valentine's Day was for me the first Google Doodle that I ever played. Yeah, and it's very interesting that they had two really substantial uh, Google Doodles right, uh, you know, consecutive of each other, um, because that's not usually a thing that they that, that they do. Um, but they had Halloween 2016 going right into uh, Valentine's Day 2017, where you have to collect uh, various items um, to woo over a partner, and then uh, you know, that's kind of the whole game. It's a little platformer. Um, with a couple different aspects to it. It's actually a pretty well-made platformer, in my opinion. Um, so, I, like, I, I said at the beginning of the stream, or at the beginning of, uh, you know, this run, that uh, the All Doodles experience really lets you um, see how Doodles evolve and, uh, you know, kind of how they progress in style, how they progress in gameplay. And I think this is a great example of it. Like, if you look at Pac-Man or Stanislaw Lem, uh, compared to Valentine's Day or Magic Cat Academy, like it, it's no contest. Like these are just simply better made. Like look at these cutscenes; they're just good cutscenes. Um, and then you look at stuff like Stanislaw Lem, where you know cutscenes take half an hour and uh, they're just you walking. Like that's it. Um, granted, they were hand drawn, uh, but that also I think is a uh, 
quality matter that they, um, you know, changed as they uh, progressed through Google Doodles. And so it's really, really interesting to see this progression, um, uh, especially as the gameplay changes. So, um, like Fibble stated earlier, the ones later on tend to uh, require more skill. This is a great example of that one, as this is, you know, not the easiest platformer on the face of the earth. Um, well, but uh, I'm doing the any percent category, which means I don't have to be collecting all of these uh, notes. But the um, three star, like with the 100 percent category of this game, where people are collecting um, all of these collectibles very, very quickly, um, is one of the hardest kind of or most like skill requiring speedruns that the community has. Um, so shout out to Funato, who's really good at this game. <laughs> So, uh, on to China. Um, shoot, I was gonna say something. Yeah, uh, Google really started to put a lot more, oops, uh, a lot more like development time, money, thought into uh, their doodles around this time. Uh, like EXCF was saying, just, uh, you know, there's a very clear progression. And, uh, you see that more and more as time goes on, and you gotta remember, like, all of these little games replace the Google uh, logo on the Google homepage for only a day or two. Um, so, just a really high quality game only getting, uh, like, showcased for, well, in this case it was four days, four days of Valentine's, but, um, yeah, really, well, really interesting. I mean, yeah, that, that's true to a point, but, like, you know, then you got Champion Island, which was there for like a month and a half. Um, but no, yeah, no, uh, it's not just production and the value that goes up too. It's a uh, uh, it's concept of the uh, doodle as a whole. Like, you know, I'm couldn't keep bringing up Stanislaw Lem because I just kind of hate that game. Um, but it's 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 you know, you have to press a couple buttons, and then this is just you know conceptually a whole different you know type of game, and it's just. Very interesting to see that progression. And now he's finished and moving on to Komodo Quiz. So now, um, objectively which, the best game in the entire series, uh, Komodo Quiz has you answering questions about Komodos. Um, unfortunately, this is one of the weird uh, cases of um, something happening to a Google game. Like the cutscenes, like you saw that weird intro text. The cutscenes have actually been lost to time. Uh, we think they have them still at Google, but they were for some reason removed before we were able to preserve it. Um, so kind of an unfortunate uh, thing that happened. Now we are moving on to one of the biggest run killers of the entire uh, All Doodles uh, run, being that of uh, the ICC Champion Trophy Begins, uh, which is you have to play cricket for a little while. Uh, and the goal of this... Uh, you know, segment of the run is to reach 100 points. He is currently at 20, and the balls speed up. So reaching 100 is a lot harder than you think it might be, um, especially as you're scoring just like one point at a time sometimes, at a maximum of six. Um, and while this is uh, one of the biggest run killers, um, some would say it is the only run killer because uh, mm. the other biggest run killer is basically a carbon copy of this game, being Fourth of July, twenty nineteen. Yeah, um, where you kind of do the exact same thing, but you know it's 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 reskinned and you know it's a little bit different with the pitches and the bases because um, it's a baseball game, and baseball is another. Uh, uh, bat and ball game like it's it's you know basically cricket um so yeah he uh fibble is one of the only people um i think one of like six maybe um who has scored uh the maximum amount of points in this game that you can reach which uh is not what you might expect to be like 255 um but instead 999 it keeps speeding up until 999 um, and he was able to score that. So that is a really impressive feat. Um, I'm not sure he has the world record uh, in reaching that score, um, but the fact that he has at all is extraordinarily impressive, and he is the only person that I personally know that has done it. Yeah, it's kind of an intense run. Um, I'm doing 
really, really bad on this right now. So many ones instead of home runs that you're usually able to hit. Um, getting a four, like I just did there, is actually faster than getting a six as far as like uh, the amount of time for the amount of point you're getting. But getting a four is... You can't really do that consistently, so I'm trying to hit as many home runs as I can. Uh, it's not really working out, though. Uh, <laughs> I remember back in my first All Doodles run, I scored like 96, and then I lost. Like, okay, so he reaches 100 there, moving on to uh, the anniversary of the birth of hip hop, uh, which is a lot of menuing, but at least it sounds cool. You have to reach 10 achievements uh, until um, you know you've completed them all. Uh, and, uh, basically you have to flip through a bunch of records, play them, uh, you know, at different combinations, and, um, that's kind of just how it goes. You pause records, you, uh, you know, mute records, that's pretty much it. It's a turntable. But it's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and it also features one of the best, uh, characters in all of, uh, um, Google Doodle lore, Fab Five Freddy. Yeah, it's a very short uh, speedrun, but I kind of wanted to talk about it a little bit more because I think it's one of the coolest uh, doodles out there. Um, if you listen to a lot of older hip-hop like I do, um, I mean, a lot of those samples are just really classic, used in a lot of old, um, a lot of old rap music, so um, it's really, really cool experience to go and play with the turntable yourself. Like, you think you're... Yeah, like an MC, you know, it's <laughs> it's really really cool. Um, I could I could gush about it a lot, but we're on to uh, kids with coding, which is a fairly simple game. Just we have a predetermined fastest way to do things. So um, I'm just going through the motions here. Yes, yeah, 25th anniversary of kids coding. Um, you know, takes you through. Kids coding. Uh, I remember back in um, elementary school, probably like fifth grade, uh, they had uh, you know my class do something like this. Uh, I think it was on Scratch actually, which Kieran Travis, another member of the Google community, knows a lot about. Um, but it was basically the same concept, uh, and so it's it's interesting to see um, how they handled this uh, in a very um, kind of childish manner. But I think that's appropriate for the uh, subject. Um, so, uh, yeah, he, Fibble is one of the only people I know that, uh, actually knows the route to this game. Um, I think I actually, uh, did one All Doodles run of it where I just copied what he was saying, or what he was, uh, putting down, and, um, it worked out pretty well. Um, so this is, uh, tedious if you don't know what you're doing, but if you do actually, you know, have a good grasp on how kids coding works, it, it's, it's pretty straightforward and simple. You just have to collect the carrots, move the rabbit. Yeah, um, for this game, actually, there is a bit more of a, um, any percent, uh, route. It, it actually has a glitch that allows you to go about 10 seconds faster, but it's really, really hard to pull off in real time, so I'm running, uh, the kind of route for 100% here. Um, still pretty quick, so uh, we finished that one, and we're on to Sorensen. Um, Sorensen was a doodle that we actually kind of forgot existed, and we found kind of more recently. <laughs> we just were, were looking through the Google Doodle page one day and kind of came across it, and we're like, oh, this exists. Um, really short quiz. Oops. But we're on to Gnomes now, which is kind of uh, a bit of a harder one to do a lot of RNG involves. Um, you have to get to 1000 um, in order to progress the run and I'm trying to do a strat here where I get into this log behind me. Um, it can be kind of a, oh my goodness, it can be kind of a pain sometimes so bear with me. Um, Conceptually though, uh, Gnomes I want to say is one of the uh, probably most creative um, Google Doodles because it's all the gnomes have different like uh you know bounciness levels and you know oh, weights, um, making it pretty difficult to control uh, all of the different ones consistently. So you end up like maining in uh, you know one of the gnomes. Um, 
In this case, he chose the uh, fat pink one. And then the logs act as cannons, the toadstool act as uh, trampolines, and the goal is to reach 1,000. Yeah, the yeah, game... The clouds uh, make you fly up a little bit. The game goes to 3,000 points, but we just do 1,000 for uh, this run. And um, every single time, the uh, layout of the level is the same, but the rate at which you rotate once you're shot from the cannon is not. So sometimes you get bad RNG, but um, we're on to the next one, which is... The Great Ghoul Duel. Yes. This is the Great Ghoul Duel, and it was it was made for Halloween 2018. Uh, it was originally a multiplayer game where you compete against people uh, to try to collect these little spirit flames. Um, however, uh, since uh, data leaks have um, shown that they are planning a sequel for it, uh, they have taken down the servers for it, so multiplayer is no longer an option for it, unfortunately. Uh, so in the All Doodles run, the um, goal that you have to reach for it is just completing the tutorial. And now we are on to the second run killer, uh, being the carbon copy of um, Cricket that I mentioned, 4th of July 2019. Uh, this is the first 2019 Google Doodle. Um, and yeah, you just played baseball with food, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you have to reach 25 in order to advance to the next one. Um... So yeah, the, the strategy here is to get all singles. Um, that for that to happen, it requires a lot of skill and RNG. Um, only one person has ever managed to do it in an actual full run. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do here. Um, just get as many singles as you can, and then a home run at the very end to get 25. Um, you can also get cherries um, as your food here. Cherries will occasionally uh, pop up. And those count as two extra runs, so if we can get one here, that would be some nice luck. Um, I won't lie, I kind of always thought that was a glitch. I was like, I'm not really sure why that counted as two runs, but okay. Oh really? Yeah, no, it's it's uh, specific to the cherry. So the hat changing color here will tell me which pitch he's about to throw out, and then there's a certain spot to hit the ball where you can get a single pretty much every time. Um, so yeah, we're just plugging along, but like uh, Brendan said, sometimes you can mess up like I just did there and accidentally take a strike, and then sometimes you get unlucky with the pitch thrown, get something like a red fastball, uh, which I'm hoping doesn't happen. Um, Fastballs are essentially impossible to hit if you don't just spam. Um, hey! Oh, we got the cherries! Nice little bit of luck there. Uh, like, oh. That's yeah, so unfortunate. it's absurdly fast. Like, I'm not really sure why they put it in other, just, other than just to be hard. Like, um, but yeah, he took a strike there. You have three strikes and then you're out. Unlike cricket, where if you take one strike, then you're out. Um, so, in Oops. some ways, uh, in some ways, um, 4th of July is actually a little bit easier than cricket. However, um, you'll see that people less consistently reach 25. Alright, and then home run here to get 25, hopefully. There we go. Yeah, good run. Fairly quick, all things considered. Uh, then we have, this was just a little interactive game that Google put out for Halloween 2019. Uh, we just have to open all the doors, and then... If you screen. press trick or treat um, on any of them, they will have like a little cutscene that uh, either like tells you a little bit about the animal or has them do a little fun thing. So it looks like some menuing went awry. Um, but now we're moving on to the next reset. 2019 because, oh my Google goodness. Google. Oh my god, inside or outside. Um, so this is uh, Celebrating Lotteria. No uh, so way. Lotteria is a Mexican board game of chance. Uh, and... Um, okay. <laughs> it's all about uh, RNG on uh, what you know format you get. So if you get um, like anything that only requires four to win, uh, then you're pretty solid and it'll be a pretty fast run, hopefully. Um, but if you get inside or outside, that's pretty much an immediate reset because you, it's either the inside, which is four, or the outside, which is 12. Um, so, or sorry, yeah, no, 12. 
Um, so now he has corners, so as long as he gets any of the four corners, he will be good. Um, the world record for this run is actually one of the most contentious ones. Uh, was held by Red Mushroom for a really long time, uh, with a, uh, five-card run. The minimum being four. Um, however, that was, uh, overthrown pretty recently by a, uh, novice runner named Sophia, um, who, uh got a five card run with just a little bit better reaction time and so um basically how that went down was uh within the last week um sophia has been kind of you know like you know playfully bullying red mushroom and it's honestly pretty <laughs> funny but um uh red mushroom um decided that Man. it uh yeah, this is pretty bad RNG. He's got like a really bad threes, but no fours. Um, another three. You have threes on all of the corners. Oh, there we go. Um, but Red Mushroom recently got a uh, four card run, meaning that he is the world record holder once again. And now we are moving on to the uh, first 2020 Google Doo, uh, celebrating the Bureau, which is the uh, little instrument uh, that has the little metal tabs that you have to press down. Yeah, the little thumb guitar. Um, and Bira, this game is a really, really cool doodle, um, with these cutscenes and then playing these, um, kind of, uh, traditional, uh, African songs, um... I like how you say that and then you skip every single level. Unfortunately, we are speedrunners and they did make, <laughs> they did put a skip level button on every level, so we just skip all of them. Um, and... We are done. And that's really unfortunate because this is a really, really well-made doodle. Um, and if you really play it through, uh, you will play some, you know, classic songs on the Nibira. Um And it just, it, it looks, it sounds really good. And it's, yeah, it's just really conceptually well done. Yeah, so really cool art style. To, uh, yeah, now we're moving on to Magic Cat, Magic Cat Academy 2. Uh, the second uh, Magic Cat Academy featuring Momo, um, where you're underwater this time, and you have to defeat ghosts with the same spells, uh, with a couple different ones, but largely the same stuff. Um, so the route, of course, is different than the first one, um, but this leads... In, oh, that was lucky, getting the uh, arrow pointing upwards. <laughs> Not sure what happened there. Yeah, so uh, it's pretty much the same as the first one. Uh, <coughs> this is the uh, third installment in the Momoverse, um, or Momo is now, you know, still taking on Ghost, but it is a direct sequel to Halloween 2016. Yeah, um, it's pretty much the same type of thing that's happening, except um, I personally do not like this game as much because I feel like it's a much slower pace, especially this level. I really dislike this level. Um, there's so much time I can basically do whatever I want, and then these fish will come out, zap him, and then I can just be like, hey, hello, you know, there's so much downtime, I don't like it, but, um, depends, just your taste, I guess. Yeah, I mean, we're getting into the era of Google Doodles where you can start criticizing, uh, <laughs> pacing, um, which, uh, was not, um, something that we were, you know, kind of able to do during Stanislaw Lem, which is why that has a lot less, well, I mean, it still has a lot of complaints, but it has, uh, sometimes less complaints than this one. I mean, especially since this is the, uh, sequel to a doodle that is really well-paced, really well-made, um, it is kind of held to a higher standard than something like Stanislaw Lem. Yeah, so we're finally done with this level. Um... And on to the next one. This one also takes a bit longer than uh, Magic Cat Academy 1. Um, and also was, I remember this coming out, and it being quite popular among my friends. Um, but we're getting, this is the fifth to last run in the category. So we're nearing the end, but we still have about 20 minutes to go. Um, the last few games, the last few doodles are some of the largest and best, so uh, definitely the best for last here. They're also some of the most skill-based, other than uh, Lotteria, which is the uh, most skill-based of um, all of the doodles. Yeah, definitely. So many strategies you can use in Lotteria. Uh, we'll see if the I remember the... The most being uh, El Elote Strat, but um, 
Yeah. Oh my goodness, uh, come on. So, uh, this level of, um... This level of Magic Cat Academy 2 is just spam, and then, uh, go really fast on single symbols. And it's really not terribly difficult if you know what the symbols are, um, which Fibble does for at least most of them. And then his spamming spills, skills are really good. Um, and that's pretty much the whole level. And then he turns into a cute vampire squid. Yep, um, yeah, I forgot, forgot one of the things, and then I took a hit there, um, no consequence, really, this game is fairly easy to survive, um, yeah, this game is a lot easier than the first installment, um, simply because, you know, there are shields now, and a couple other spells that, uh, can help you out, um, and I just want to say something about this level in particular, this level, uh, gives me so much stress. This is just a really, really stressful level, <laughs> and you'll see why very soon. Nightmare fuel. I mean, spooky music. You're in an abandoned pirate ship, and then this happens. Oh man, the suspenseful mu music just gets me every time. You know? I mean, the only thing is, the anglerfish does actually move a lot slower than you expect him to. But then he just, like, starts creeping up on you with his mouth open, and it's like, Oh my god, it's coming, it's coming, my feet! But, we got him, and look, he's this cute little boy, so... Um, on to the last level. Lofi Formes. Lofi Forms, I don't know. Uh, so now... Uh, the, uh, this monster has melded into the surface of the ocean, and ghosts come from his eyes. Yeah, and to clarify, um, this is the same, uh, or canonically the same final boss as the first Magic Cat Academy. Um, just, you know, he's possessed the abyss, uh, so it's a little bit more to be worried about, I guess. Um... Uh, this also does take place immediately after the events of the first one. Ooh, that was kind of close. Um, and it's very difficult to get through these last, uh, two stages, um, of the game without taking at least one hit. Uh, so I'll be surprised if he does it. But it looks like he's managing so far. That was close. <laughs> this one is especially difficult, though. I think I'll take a hit on this one, probably. I'm not that good. I love, I love his little grin. It's so funny. Yep, just a final little thing here, and then right now. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. And there's the hit. A little bit there. Uh, last little time on that. Um, Savoy Ballroom. It's a rhythm game uh, put out in early 2020. Uh, so we're getting into uh, 2020 here. Where's this 2021? No, uh, 2021. 2021. 2021. And my bad. one of the uh, highlights of this game is its excellent music. It has a great music choice um, uh, throughout all the levels of it, uh, being some really jazzy swing tunes, uh, some of which are oldies. Um, however, <laughs> they're all copyright, so they've been removed for the sake of the stream not getting muted. So, yeah, enjoy trust me. some silence. Very, very nice songs. Um, this is let's call the whole thing off. Uh, Louis Armstrong, you know, classics. Just this is this is a really cool doodle to play. Really fun time. Uh, but yeah, I had to go in last night and change the files because uh, I don't want this stream getting muted for a little bit. So uh, I really highly recommend that you all check this one out. Uh, it's just one of the coolest. It's one of the best vibes I think. Um, and this stream will not do it justice because it doesn't have the sound. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, he's actually doing this silently on his own end. Um, so he's just, you know, clicking the buttons as the circles tell him to rather than actually following the music, which is very impressive. Well, Especially not, not as really. Especially as you'll see in level three. <laughs> these, these first few aren't uh, that challenging, but um, the... Third level is can be pretty difficult, and the fourth bonus level, which we don't play through here, is uh, Careless Whisper, and it's 
very, very difficult to full combo that one. Also very, very fun. Um, the little note guy wears sunglasses and, you know, the classic do 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 Just, you know, very fun time. Um, yeah. This is a pretty long one, too, so... Again, my apologies, no music, but nothing really we can really do about it. So I think I would like to take this time to uh, talk a little bit about the Google Doodle speedrunning community. So we have a Discord server, um, of course, like every speedrunning community does. Um, and we are... Uh, our, our, our series, Super Mod, is um, a person called Citrus, um, who... Uh, pretty much is the head of the whole series. However, he's been in inactive for a little while, so we're uh, pretty much headed by Rennie. Um, and uh, there are a couple other really active community members who contribute a lot to uh, you know everything regarding speedrunning of Google Doodles, those being uh, Ren Mushroom, uh, Fibble here, um, Funado, uh, Pull Matrix, Gadget Lab, um, and just a couple other people um, who really, you know, help make the community what it is. Uh, and yeah, yeah so we, we have a we have a strong community that um, really takes speedrun.com seriously, and we've uh, recently been revamping a couple of our leaderboards because uh, we've noticed some issues with them. Um, so now hopefully uh, the leaderboards will be a little bit more accurate and a little bit more appealing. Yeah, big shout-outs to them. Um, yeah, and again, Red Mushroom, kind of the guy behind this whole uh, Doodles launcher, um, application and he just has a lot of passion um, really helped me get into everything uh, so yeah just huge shout outs to him I know he's watching right now in Poland so um, yeah thanks a lot man but we are almost done and the game that's coming next is the big one Google Doodle Champion Island Games Begin that is the game with Lucky the Cat as you uh, go around doing mini games and then kind of an open RPG uh, style world. Um, it got a lot of recognition. Um, it was on the homepage for like a month during the uh, Tokyo Olympics, uh, summer of 2021 last year. Um, so it is uh, just super, the most popular uh, Google Doodle to speedrun definitely by far. Um, yeah, and it's going to be really fun to uh, kind of showcase some of the cool things that we found in that game, um, glitches, strategies, um, we've really taken the game uh, through a lot uh, these past few months, especially, too. we found a lot within yeah, the game. Our, so. our dedicated uh, speedrunning community around uh, specifically Champion Island has found a lot of glitches to use in uh, the any percent category um, uh, to the point that running the game um, initially was uh, nowhere close to um, uh, you know reaching sub 8 minutes and now our world record is 7 minutes 31 seconds just because of all these glitches so now he's heading into the first mini game which is Marathon uh, he did fail a TSS which uh, skips the tutorial skip um, which sounds redundant I know but it saves about 8 seconds um, and now he's pulling off something called GDS. So he did a little bit of menuing after the cutscene. And now he has the uh, start a new game menu overlapped over uh, the marathon mini game. Um, so he's taken a bit of a safe strap, sta safe strat here so he doesn't have to use the shield. The shield, uh, which is used by the same button to select uh, start a new game. Now if he clicks uh, any of the buttons on the start a new game screen, he will uh, have to restart marathon. Uh, or, or at least it will be paused for a little bit, and that will uh, lose him a lot of time. So he has a uh, 37-46 marathon, a very good run, but he probably did get sanded somewhere. Um, now he's moving on to the second one, which is rugby. Uh, rugby, you can also do uh, the same menuing thing for, which uh, is called GDS. Um, and it is called that because it stands for Games Dead Strat. This was discovered a little while ago. Um, Games Dead Strat uh, means that the game is dead. It's pretty much just boned like um you know this this is a huge game changer and is the thing that got the first uh speedrunners under eight minutes um 
So now uh, he's moved on to table tennis, which he cannot uh, uh, use GDS for. And the big, um, the big thing about GDS is that it skips the ending cutscene. So that saves about eight seconds per mini game, uh, and in an eight-minute run, that's a very substantial margin. Um, so the ending cutscene of uh, table tennis and climbing cannot be skipped by GDS. Uh, because you have to use the space bar in order to optimize the run, uh, and, or space bar enter or whatever you use. Um, and if you use that button, it will also select uh, one of the menu options under start a new game. So uh, unfortunately, that's not something that you can do. Um, now, the power shots are very integral to the uh, table tennis mini game in that you have to power shot at very specific moments uh, so that, oh, he missed one ball, but it's toward the two balls, but it's toward the end, so it shouldn't affect his time too much. Um, you have to, uh, yeah, uh. power shot at very specific times. Oh, he was trying to pull off GRS, <laughs> which is Games Ruined Strat. Uh, so that was another thing found out extremely recently. Um, that, uh, basically if you click almost frame perfect on the pause button as the game is ending, it will have the same effect as GDS, just without the menu at the beginning. It is faster, um, but it's also extremely inconsistent. So anyone who can pull it off, you know, consistently is kind of a god at the game. Yeah, uh, so there's, now he is, uh, there's a lot to talk play. about with this game. Um, <laughs> like, uh, the XCF kind of going off about all the strategies and stuff uh, there's just so much that we couldn't possibly cover everything in the short amount of time that it takes to run this game um i just want to say like yeah there's there's a ton of things that go into optimizing every sport um except this one and the next one because it's just kind of an auto scroller um but yeah we found gds as kind of a big way to skip the ending cutscenes that was kind of like the holy grail glitch of the game, and we actually found it, which is really cool um, when that happens. So, yeah, go ahead. So now he's into skateboarding. <laughs> he's using GDS again because he does not have to use the uh, space bar or enter uh, because that is only used to jump, and ramps can also help you jump. Uh, so for this, uh, to do tricks, you have to uh, initially get off the air or get off the ground, um, and. Uh, yeah, you just kind of spin around, do tricks like that. You can't really see the scores too well, um, but he has to reach a minimum of 5,001 5, points. And it's interesting that he's not going immediately for hide and seek, uh, which is just finding the Tanuki around the, uh, the champion of the sport around the uh, map, uh, because that gives you 5,000 points immediately. Um, but he is instead going for just, you know, sliding on rails, which is an interesting strat that I'm not sure I've seen before. So now he uses GDS to get over to artistic swimming, which is probably the most auto scroller one of this. It is a rhythm game. It's Friday Night Funkin'. Uh, it's better, but um, so it's uh, you have to you know uh, press the arrows at the certain beat points, and it's great. Um, so yeah, this just has a banger OST that I'll let you listen to now. Yeah. So uh, maybe we didn't really explain it, but the premise of the game to win the category that I'm playing right now, which is all scrolls for comment. All Scrolls Percent is to um, beat all seven sports, or all seven minigames. Um, there are harder versions of every sport, and there's actually, like, um, this is a full-fledged RPG world. There's characters to talk to, there's dialogue. We're not just seeing it because, or we're not seeing it because we are warping around to the, to the different sports. Um, there's quests, there's trophies to get, there's, there's a ton. It's a great experience. It can take a couple hours to fully complete. Um, so if you haven't already, because I know this is uh, one of the most popular Google Doodles and a lot of people have played it, but if you haven't already, yeah, please give this give this game a try, a nice little time waster for a little bit. Um, so... So Fibble here forgot to do GDS at the very beginning. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, a little... He has the cutscene there, so that uh, loses a little bit of time. Uh, and another thing about, you know, playing through the whole game is that this is also the fourth installment of the Momoverse, but you'll see that if you play through the entire game, which I highly recommend you do. Um, so GDS for archery is very different from the rest. Uh, instead of just, uh, you know, pressing enter to enter the game, you have to hold enter, and then also, um, 
uh, click with your mouse the orange play button while the menu is up uh, of the game. Uh, and then you have to hold down enter the entire time so you are just spewing arrows and don't have to press down the space bar at any point. Um, because if you press it down, then you aren't shooting any more arrows because you have to click the menu and that pauses the game and ruins GDS, so you have to hold it down the entire time. And that actually make this, makes this uh, level a lot harder. Um, and I've lost a couple runs to archery, um, which is kind of pathetic if you mentioned that before GDS was a thing. Um, there is a second level to archery. There is a second level to every game, and some games have three levels, um, at least in the RC7 version. Uh, but archery 2 is largely regarded as the hardest level in the entire game, and I would probably argue the hardest mini game in any Google Doodle. Uh, it is friggin' hard, dude. Uh, so he's moving on to climbing now, uh, and he's probably going to take the world record strat with no, or world record route with no pause strat, um, because that's just the most consistent thing to do. Uh, if he nails it, he will get 118 um, as his time, uh, which is an 11 second run. Ah, but he misses one cycle, so he uh, gets the 116. The divine so after that, this yeah. cutscene. After this cutscene, the final cutscene will play, um, meaning that the run has ended, and here it is. Uh, so now he is moving on to celebrating Wiwa, uh, which is, if I'm not mistaken, a Native American tribe, uh, and they're, um, you know, celebrating the weaving. So yeah, we weave. Wiwa is the person uh, right here. Uh, this is a weird doodle to say the least it's nothing like they've ever done before but it is a really cool piece of history and uh, you get to learn about this really cool figure in uh american native american history so um yeah basically you just weave um sometimes the physics can be really weird with the thread so uh very easy to make mistakes but uh we'll see where the run takes us. As you can see though, Fibble has kind of mastered the physics uh, of these with very fluid movements and also the menuing between levels. Yeah. Um, this is also one of the least run Google Doodles, so if you're looking <laughs> for something that, uh, you know, to get into and you'll probably rank high, this would be a good place to start. Yes. Uh, we are nearing the end of the entire all doodles run um honestly this is faster than i expected i would be going i'm only about uh 10 seconds behind the current world record and my personal best um so if this pizza uh run goes really well uh maybe you can see a new world record being set uh we'll see yeah and pizza is the last doodle um in 2021 uh and since this is the 2021 version of uh all doodles um because you know 2022 has not ended yet so they can't you know include all of the doodles in it yet um this is the final uh game in this run yes looks like he's going for the 100 percent route on this I one. <laughs> uh, doesn't quite get it but still it's fine um now he's moving on to the dessert pizza which is the final stage of this game did i get it and he gets it all right and that's, um that's the run that's time um i that this was only about two seconds behind uh my current personal best and world record and uh this like brendan said this is a doodle that was made in um 2022 so it's not part of the category but i think it's nice to end because it shows my love for all of you guys um so thank you so much for watching um thank you so much for having us on this um yeah what were you gonna say <laughs> no yeah i was just gonna mention that this is a, a 2022 doodle for valentine's day um it's just a really cute simple little thing that's going to be included in the uh, next iteration of all doodles and hopefully we'll see you guys again for that iteration of all doodles yeah um it'll be exciting to see what they put out um for the rest of the year for 2022 on the google homepage. so um if you ever see something replace the uh 
Google logo, uh, be sure to check it out and uh, maybe think about speedrunning it. Um, you know, it's just uh, some really cool stuff. So, um, again, thank you all. Um, yeah, please donate to No Kid Hungry, really good cause. Um, I mean, yeah, thank yeah. you all for watching. <laughs> thank you, uh, Speed Gaming, for having us. Uh, this has been uh, EXDF, uh, me as a commentator, and Fibble uh, uh, as the runner and commentator. Um, and yeah, just really great job, Fibble. Uh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, yeah, th thank you for joining me and commentating. Uh, real pleasure. So yeah, shout out to EXDF and all of his. Uh, socials and stuff. <laughs> you know, you can check me out on Twitch. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, I think we're I think we're good. And thank you both. There, that was uh, actually really, really interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, big thank you to both Fibble there and EXDF for that great run of all, basically every Google Doodle <laughs> in existence at this point, or at least the ones that they could get a hold of. So uh, mm. that was really, really great there. I got a $1 donation there at one point there from Red Mushroom there <laughs> saying, <laughs> Loteria is a Mexican board game of chance. Let's go. Like, oh, it is. So, uh, <laughs> awesome. Thank you. And here in a few minutes, uh, everyone, we're going to go ahead and we're going to start firing up our Sonic block of the, uh, the day here. We've got four Sonic games going to be played by Argic starting here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get that all set up and I'll be back in just a minute to talk to you a little bit more about no.